Hi friends, welcome to Offer Studies YouTube channel. This is part 18 in PySpark playlist. In this video, we are going to discuss about column class in PySpark. So we will be understanding how to create a column class object and also we will be seeing various ways to access a column from data frame. So let's try to start this demo. So PySpark.SQL.Column class actually provides you several functions when you work with the data frames it will actually represent a column in data frame only like in our previous video we discussed about row class that will represent a row in data frame similarly this column class will represent a column in data frame and once you take any column from the data frame you can perform various operations on top of it you can manipulate the cal column values you can evaluate the expression to some boolean value like true or false so that you can filter the rows you can retrieve a partial portion of the value you can do many things actually okay so we will discuss that applying various type of functions on top of a column object in our next video so this video focus will be to creating a column column object uh, value uh, and also uh, how to retrieve any specific column from a data frame the various ways we have for it so let me go to browser this is my databricks workspace let's go to workspace users my name right click create notebook and i want to name this notebook like column notebook okay python is a default language this is my cluster let me hit create button to create a notebook first once the notebook created after that i will practically show you by creating a column object first before Meanwhile, if I go back to presentation, as I explained here, lit is a SQL function that will be easiest way to create a column class object. So when you use lit, lit means literal with some static value, it will create a complete column with that static value. So column a b c a, a, a new column with a b c d as a value something like this. Okay. So I will practically show you that. So if I go to uh, Databricks workspace here and here from so let me zoom this little bit while writing code from pyspark dot sql dot functions let me import lit function and then what i am doing it i am using this lit function and uh, into this lit function i am passing some value maybe a b c d now this code will execute and it will return some object right so let me save that object into like column one so this is a variable name in which this object whatever get create from this code will get stored here so now let's try to use a type function to see the type of this column one so that it will make sense whether this variable holds a column class object or not so let's try to print that information and let me hit shift enter now to execute this command here so now if you clearly observe it says column one variable type is column that means lit function will actually create one column and if this is the default values are a static values it will take into that column rows actually okay so now let's go back to presentation and now let's try to discuss various ways to manipulate uh, various ways to fetch the column from a data frame before doing that using this lit function to make you more sense let's try to have one some dummy data frame on top of that using this lit let's try to add a new column as well so let me do one thing here so let me use a data variable and inside this variable i want to store some values so maybe mahir and then maybe gender sorry so gender is male and then maybe salary 2000 okay so let's try to keep all these items as a tuple here so it represents one row now let me copy this entire content control c then the second item is again tuple in the list and this time in the tuple first item is of a male maybe salary 4000 then let's try to add a schema variable so in the schema variable i want to define column names so name column then gender column and then finally salary column now from if you have seen my previous videos you know that spark keyword will actually give a spark session object on top of that we have a create data frame function for that we can pass our data and also schema variables to create a data frame 
so whatever the data frame we create we are holding it into a variable called df after that here i can simply use df.show or df.print schema as well to see the schema so let me hit shift enter now and see the code and where we will be able to create a data frame using this code or not so let's wait for the code to execute here if you see we were able to create a data frame it has two rows so everything goes, looks good now what i said is using lit function you can create a column right so on top of this data frame let's try to add one column and that column i want to create using a lit function so what i will be doing it is uh, here right once the data frame get creates so let me use another cell here df dot if you have seen my previous videos you know that using with function you can create a new data frames uh, new columns right so here uh, i will be naming the column name as new column then value so i am using a lit function here to the lit function here i am supplying like maybe new column value okay so this entire code will create a new data frame so let me save it in df1 and this time let's try to have df1 dot show also df1 dot print schema okay so df1 dot print schema so let's try to use this code now and now this time let me hit shift enter to execute this cell and see what will happen we should be able to see a new column called new column and we see values also in it and in the schema also you can see your new column right so that means this lit function actually returned one column object that get added into my data frame okay so now let's assume i have this data frame now i want to access this gender column maybe or name column so what are the various ways to access this to access it if i go back to presentation so there are multiple ways you can use like this df data frame dot column name or you can use df like a indexed syntax here in the index you can mention the column name as a key or you can use column function to refer to some column and fetch that column from a data frame let me practically show you all this here so here what i am doing df dot maybe let's use a select transformation the it is like a simple select query what you write in sql it will select the columns so here i am telling from my data frame okay df1 right so we created a data frame called df1 right so let's use the same data frame from my data frame uh, i want to take maybe name column so whatever the output comes let's try to show that back so if i hit shift enter i should see my name column here see i am able to see so not only that as i said i can use index syntax as well so i can use like this so with a curly braces mention your column name in string here now if i execute still i see the same result that means still i am able to access the name column so not only that and uh, lastly what i can do is i can use a column function to the column function i can pass my column name okay so now if i hit shift enter still i should see the same same see ah uh, okay so there is an error the reason is actually here we should close this select statement here let me hit shift enter and let's see still error why because this call function we have to import first so let me import that from pyspark dot sql dot functions let's try to import column function now if i hit shift enter i should see my column name values getting fetched correctly right so this is how using these various syntaxes you can fetch the volume values of the column from data frame easily not only that if your data frame has a structure type column still you can refer in a similar syntax so firstly if you don't know what is structure type you have to watch my previous videos in the pyspark playlist all the videos in my playlist are in a sequence order so i would encourage you guys to watch all the videos in the sequence order to get more out of it so let me create a new data frame which holds a structure type column and then let me practically explain that so here we have uh, till here it is fine salary then as a fourth col fourth column i want like a properties in which i will be defining like what is the hair color like black and what is the eye color so maybe brown similarly let me copy this sub tuple here inside a tuple as a fourth item tuple so black hair blue eyes maybe okay so like this i will be using it now here when you are defining a schema let's try to use a structure types here so what i will be doing is from so if you are not making sense the code what i am writing it as i said 
you should watch my previous videos of structure type and everything so here let me try to uh, import so, sorry from sql dot types import structure type string type comma structure type let me import structure type and also let me import structure field and also let me import integer type okay so now here in the schema instead of hard coding the column names i am creating a object of structure type as i said in my previous videos structure type is list of structure fields so i will be creating a list i want to write the code in a multiple lines so i am using a slash there to end the line and then here structure field list structure field of first column name is first column name is if you see name column which holds a string type okay so this is fine uh, okay and then comma then slash then in the second line again structure field then what is the second column name second column name i want it to be like a gender column which is string type again so let's use a string type here let's close this here comma slash then again structure field structure field of third column i want to be like a salary salary column and then salary column the data type is integer type okay there is something wrong one second okay so salary column comma and here so i should be using a integer type so let me use a integer type here this is fine slash sorry comma then slash then last column structure field again so let's try to use a structure field structure field of the final column name i want like properties props and here i want the data type to be different okay so here the data type should be structure type why because properties column holds nested call nested values okay so what i want to i want to create a another structure type small structure type here like maybe props type and this is going to be structure type so all this if you are not making sense please watch my previous videos especially structure type videos okay so that you will say you will get most out of it okay so now here what i want to is structure field st sorry not st structure field of first column here i want to be like a this is hair color and this is eye color so hair and which is string type okay so let me use that here then comma slash then enter then agar structure field then i then again here i also like a string type right so let's use a string type here okay so now i will be using this props type as a data type for the properties column here now let me hit shift enter to execute this entire command and see the results okay so there is something error okay this is not string type this should be structure type okay so let me change this to structure type and let me hit shift enter again to run this command you can see command is running now you can see i have a four columns properties column as well and if you see the properties column is a structure type which has a nested columns like hair and i now if i want to access this structure type nested columns how to do that so that is what we are going to discuss now so let me remove all this code whatever i written here and also let me close this entire cell and also let me close this entire cell too now if i want to access that column what i should be doing is so df the data frame name is df right so df dot select and on top of select as i said df dot i can use column name so my column name is props right props dot again since it is a nested column maybe i because i want to access this i column then let's try to use a show function here and let's see whether we will be able to see the results or not see we will be able to see the results so not only that as i said i can use this indexer syntax as well like this okay let me use this also here and now if i run still i will be seeing the same output see here i got it and not only this as i said i can use a 
column function as well on top of it so when you are using a column function what you should do you should make sure to import it so from where you should import it from pyspark dot sql dot functions import call function now if i hit shift enter so it's a call function cyl so if i hit shift enter i should be seeing the same result okay so there is some error here so okay so this bracket has to be closed here so now let me hit shift enter to execute this code see i am able to see the same thing so basically if you want to access columns from a data frame you can use this kind of syntaxes whatever we just now discussed so to create any column object you can use the lit function as i discussed here and if you want to access a column from a data frame you can use all these kind of syntaxes i hope you got this video in our next video we will be seeing once you represent a column using one object then how to apply some functions on top of it so we will discuss some useful functions what we regularly use thank you for watching please subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notification whenever i add videos thank you so much